Japanese food is so much more than just sushi. And in the Satochi region, I was blown away by the locally sourced beef and fish dishes, as well as the homegrown vegetables, the fruits, the noodles, and of course, the sake. I thought I knew what good beef tasted like, but Kobe beef in Kobe City is a whole different story. Right here at this restaurant, Kobe Misono, they actually invented this grill, teppanyaki, and that style of cooking is really popular all around the world. We even have Benihana in the U.S. because of this restaurant. It all started right here. Not only is it entertaining to watch the cooking process, but the meat is cut from the highest quality, naturally fed Japanese black cattle. And all the meat here is certified with the highest rankings. This is some of the most flavorful meat I've ever had. I now understand all the hype about Kobe beef. There's another famed local dish in Satochi, but this one can be deadly. In Satochi, fugu is very popular. It's actually blowfish, and the chef needs to be very highly trained to actually prepare it correctly. There's a lot of toxins in the fish. So we're here at a very professional restaurant. We have a beautiful display of it. It's all filleted. We have skin right here. We have testicles right here. I'm kind of excited to try out the, uh, the meat. It has a delicate, slightly sweet flavor. It's very mild. But our platter of sashimi-style fugu was so beautiful, I had a hard time believing that it could be fatal. Also in Yamaguchi, their signature soba dish is not what you'd expect. These green noodles are cooked on ceramic wooden tiles. Matcha tea is used in the noodles to make that green color. And I loved the texture, which was soft and savory as you dip it in each sauce. But as the meal progresses, it cooks more on the tile and gets a little crispy. Eating udon noodles in the traditional Buddhist monk fashion is noisy. And at the picturesque Shinshoji Zen Garden, we were able to take part in this special meal the same way that the monks do. On the topic of noodles, another prefecture which is famous for udon is Kagawa. We visited the Nakano Udon School for a lesson in making these simple flour and water noodles. But what resulted was a lot more dancing than I expected. After our lesson though, we got to eat our creation. I also really love soba noodles, which are made with buckwheat. And we had them prepared by hand from a very sweet lady in Ia. So we're here at this tiny farmer's restaurant in the mountains of Ia, and we're gonna have a very typical lunch. This place is very popular because they serve all local food with vegetables and things that are from this area. We have tempura vegetables and rice and tea, and our chef is this lovely lady who makes all of it right there, and she's very masterful. So many people know about this small spot and come here just for her food. She welcomed us to our home where she prepared tempura using local vegetables wild deer, and tofu. And she also served us perfectly seasoned soba noodles. We even had a song for dessert. One of our most interactive and farm-to-table meals was at a kuminka, or traditional guest house, up here in Ia. So we're up here in Ia in the mountains and we're about to enjoy this amazing looking dinner that was prepared for us by a local woman. She used only ingredients and things grown and made from this area because we're pretty remote and you can't just go to the store. So what we have in front of us is some mapu tofu, which is like a spicy tofu. We have spring rolls. We have vegetables like pumpkin and this certain vegetable that comes from here called konyak. And we have radish and pickles, potatoes with miso. And then in the center, the big part of the meal is the shabu, which is a beautiful boiled soup. We have tofu and vegetables in it. And what we do is we take these strips of beautiful meat, very thin, and put them in there. And then they boil and cook so that they look like this. And they absorb all that delicious flavor of the broth. So this is quite the feast. Bring some friends. <laughs> I have to say this shabu shabu is one of my new favorite meals. I've never experienced a tasting menu quite like a Japanese kaiseki. We feasted for hours on this multi-course meal in a private room at the lavish Ryokan Kirashiki. 
Here, the attention is on the detail. Each course is meant to wow visually as well as through taste and smell. The extensive menu changes depending on the season. And our winter menu included seasonal vegetables and fruit, local seafood, and savory meats. So this is just one of the many courses that we're having here tonight at the RioCon, and this is the sashimi course. All of the fish here actually come from the Sito Inland Sea, so they're all super local. And the beauty of it is you can choose whether you want to eat them raw, sashimi style, with one of their appropriate sauces, or if you want to grill them. They provided me with my own personal little grill, which is nice for some people who don't like raw fish. I happen to like both, so I'm going to eat it both ways. And a major perk of staying in one of these traditional homes is you can have a chef come in in the mornings and make you beautiful breakfasts like this. We have a very Japanese style breakfast. He came in, cooked for us, and now we can enjoy it in our own dining room, just like a real home. Japanese breakfasts are an adventure. There's so many tiny, perfect little bites, and some were flavors I had never experienced. I loved sampling a little bit of everything. It was fun. I enjoyed the pickled vegetables, the tofu, and the sweet Japanese omelet. Ooh, and here we have some lotus root. That's pretty. So here on Miyajima Island, they have a very special treat. It's this, momichi manju. It's the shape of a red leaf, and it's filled with all different things. This one's filled with red bean paste. It's like a soft, sweet pancake. Mmm. Wow. And you have to wash down all of this food with Japan's national drink, sake. We're here in Nara, which is one of the most famous areas for producing sake. And it actually is famous because the water quality is so high. And I'm standing in one of the oldest producers. It's been around for 350 years, and they produce only the highest quality sakes, which I'm about to taste. Sake is an alcoholic spirit made from fermented rice, and it has been popular for thousands of years. I learned about the rigorous production process in the museum, and just like wine, the types of barrels used are just as important as the type of rice. Here in the factory, the artisans behind me are actually making the barrels that store the sake. These barrels are so important because they impart all the flavor into the sake, and they're made out of cedar from the Nara Prefecture. They're wrapped with these belts called taga, which are made out of bamboo, and no adhesives, no metal is used to keep them together. It's all natural. In my opinion, they've definitely perfected the sake making process. They are delicious. There are several different types of sake which are characterized by their brewing method and by the amount of polish on the rice. This one is ginjo, and it's very polished, and actually it results in a really fruity flavor. And I like it because it's kind of light. And they even have sake ice cream. 